ever thought about who our great great so many greats ago grandparents might be? Us Homo sapiens. That's Latin for wise men, by the way. Might like to think of ourselves as the headliners in the human evolution concert, but truth be told, we're actually the ninth act to take the stage. Our predecessors, eight other species of humans, lived long before we stepped in. Some of these people had a longer time here on the planet than we've managed so far, even though we're the ones who usually take the historical spotlight. So, care for a family reunion? Let me introduce you to the relatives you never knew you had. Most scientists concur that around 6 million years ago, a group of primates took a bold evolutionary leap and started to walk on two legs, inaugurating the Homo genus. They traded their ape-like long arms for sturdy legs and started exploring new horizons beyond the forests. They weren't tree swingers anymore, they were upright walkers. As time went by, their brains grew and they became skilled hunters, masters of fire, and builders of shelters. They even began expressing themselves through symbolic acts. By the time Homo sapiens emerged about 300,000 years ago, we were the ninth species of the Homo genus. Prior to us, several other varieties of humans thrived. Prepare yourself for a bit of a tongue twister. Homo habilis, Erectus, Rudolfensis, Heidelbergensis, Floriensis, Neanderthalensis, Naledi, and Luzonensis. Now that we've established who's who, let's delve into the fascinating histories and lifestyles of our ancestral species. First off, let's talk about Homo habilis, or the handyman. Between 2.4 and 1.4 million years ago is when these resourceful creatures walked the Earth. Scientists, upon uncovering fossilized remains of these early humans in Tanzania, noticed that they had slightly more substantial brains than apes. Additionally, when they unearthed thousands of stone tools in close proximity, they agreed that these humans were particularly good at tool crafting, earning them the handyman nickname. Despite their nature, one considerably shorter and their weight less than the average modern human, they managed to hunt animals with stone tools, indicating complex thinking. Following them, the Homo erectus group were the first to attain fully upright postures, hence the name erectus which means upright person. Their arms were shorter when compared to their bodies and their legs longer, a physique optimized for walking and running rather than tree climbing. These individuals had a larger brain than apes, but smaller teeth. The remnants of campfires and fireplaces that scientists have uncovered suggest that these humans were likely the first to cook their food. This practice, especially when talking about meat, enabled them to grow taller and develop larger brains. These humans existed for almost nine times longer than our current stay, by the way. Our subsequent ancestor, Homo rudolfensis, was here between 1.9 and 1.8 million years ago. Sadly, we don't know much about them. They were unearthed near Lake Rudolph, now Lake Turkana, in Kenya, and possessed a larger head than Homo habilis. However, some scientists believe that they might bear a closer relationship to a different primate species, given their smaller stature. Homo heidelbergensis were small, broad humans, believed to be the first to occupy colder climates. Scientists believe that these early humans hunted big animals like horses, elephants, hippos, and rhinos using spears. They also mastered the control of fire and the construction of basic shelters from wood and stone to keep them warm. It's widely accepted that the African lineage of Homo heidelbergensis eventually led to the emergence of our species, Homo sapiens. Next, meet Homo floresiensis, affectionately known as the Hobbit, due to its diminutive stature. These petite humans inhabited the Indonesian island of Flores. Scientists have discovered remains of dwarf elephants and Komodo dragons alongside these humans, implying an island existence filled with distinctive traits and adaptations. Then we have Homo neanderthalensis, or the Neanderthals, our nearest relatives. These humans, last sighted on Earth around 40,000 years ago, were shorter and more robust than us, but had brains as large, if not larger. In harsh, chilly conditions, Neanderthals were skilled at igniting fires, building elaborate shelters, and fashioning clothes using intricate tools, like bone needles. 
Neanderthals also used to bury those that had passed, which shows they had symbolic thoughts and a sophisticated culture. It might even suggest they had some sort of language skills. Homo naledi, a species discovered recently, survived until about 236,000 years ago. Despite numerous fossil samples being available, we know very little about Homo naledi, including their exact size or lifestyle, as no tools or other animals were found alongside the fossils. Finally, we have Homo luzonensis, discovered in 2019 in a confined cave on an island in northern Indonesia. This finding reopened discussions about how these early humans reached such distant islands and whether Homo luzonensis is a distinct species or a variant of Homo floresiensis. As we navigated our ancestral tree, we can clearly see that not all of these human species cohabitated with us. Some, like the Neanderthals, did cross paths with modern humans, and perhaps not always amicably. It's believed that as Homo sapiens migrated into Europe, the Neanderthal population started to decline. We might have been rivals for resources, and sadly, for the Neanderthals, we eventually won. Another theory for the disappearance of the Neanderthals links their demise to changes in their climate. Homo sapiens may have simply been better at adapting to harsher conditions. That's not to say we didn't have some interactions with these distant relatives. Scientists have detected Neanderthal DNA within our own genetic material, indicating that crossbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals happened. The evolution of the human species is an amazing canvas of experimentation and failure, triumph, and extinction. While we Homo sapiens may feel pretty good about our accomplishments, we should acknowledge the extensive work of our ancestors, who played a part in molding us into the beings we are today. We may never truly know why we're the only surviving human species on Earth. Sure, we can romanticize. We can believe it's because we have the ability to enjoy music, invent calculus, and produce art. The fact that we can engage in complex language must have been helpful too. This puzzle leads us down an even trickier path. Since we can't pin down what exactly being a Homo sapien means, are we really that special? Also, it's important to remember that we're not at the inevitable top of human evolution. Sure, we're one species among many humans, but hey, we eventually overtook all others. But can't you picture a different evolutionary journey? Try to imagine what series of genetic mutations and historical occurrences would have led Neanderthal scientists to study our peculiar, round skulls, trying to decipher our level of humanness. See, evolution is a messy business. Species morph gradually into others, and every member of a species has their own little quirks. That's what makes evolution possible. But here's the twist. We're both uniquely different and strikingly similar to other animals thanks to evolution's game of chance. Our shared ancestry links us to the animal kingdom, yet our differences make us uniquely human. Even among ourselves, we're a blend of sameness and difference. Sure, we share a common thread with all Homo sapiens, yet what makes each human special comes with the unique mix of genes passed down from our families and even from other types of humans like the Neanderthals. Now, don't get me wrong, we humans are not that varied in some aspects. Homo sapiens have less genetic diversity than, say, bacteria, and our bodies don't have as many different shapes as fish, berries, or dogs do. However, when it comes to our behavior, we're as diverse as it gets. We wear many hats, Doctors, mathematicians, actors, teachers, outlaws, singers, you name it. There are countless ways to exist, and each of us has the personal journey of figuring out our own vision of what it means to be human. Guessing what's next for us humans is equally as tricky. But hey, we can make some smart bets. Oddly enough, our best chance at finding answers is by looking at the historical human species, we could grow taller, live longer, be leaner, and get along better, but with tinier brains.